Shreya Dhanvantri, I'm just so happy to see you. I haven't seen you since Why Cheat India. You, yes, you <laughs> I feel like we meet at like regular intervals, like comets. Like we have like a <laughs> cyclical nature of things where we meet after a certain period of time. <laughs> yeah, but as long as we, we continue from where we left off, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Likewise. Listen, you are just spectacular in Scam 1992. Yeah, I mean... You saw it? Uh, I've, I've just run through seven episodes and I... I'm just, I find it staggering, not just Hansel's direction, but you know, the performance and how this actually happened in this country. And, and that must have made you go, whoa, this actually happened in this country. Is that the first thing that, that hit you even before your part and your role and how you went through it? Uh, not, not really, because I don't think scams have magically stopped. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's not entirely surprising that it started way back when. Uh, I was see. I was just excited that this was an opportunity to play someone who was so accomplished and one of the first female financial journalists and someone who won the Padma Shri and someone who brought scam into the general lexicon of the public and uncovered something of this magnitude. So it's a pretty awesome thing. So uh, did you have to hang out with Sucheta a lot or did you were you told by Hansel that it's better that you bring some Shreya into Sucheta? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is the latter option. It is better if. Not to bring myself in it, but it is better if we were not on the quest to sort of imitate or mimic, you know. So, and uh, I mean, this was a brief that he gave all of us, me, Pratik and everybody else included from the cast, was to not like, you know, uh, make it caricaturish so that we weren't imitating and trying to like, oh, if this is how they spoke and this is just like the specific things. He just made it like, see, because we don't have insight into how they were in their workplace or with their family. There's only this spoken word on how much we gain and glean from whatever resource it is that we managed. So in terms of that, he told us just make sure you internalize everything so that ev so that when you behave or you make a certain characteristic or you portray that, it just feels more natural. But did you did you mean you must have met Sucheta? I met her. I met her, yes. But the whole the whole time I was with her, I mean I was just like <laughs> so I, I don't I don't think I, I, I was particularly useful that day to anybody <laughs> <laughs> basically you were just in awe you were like kid in a candy store types <laughs> no no completely I, I, my, I was just staring I mean because this is something that actually like you said this is something that actually happened and this is someone who actually like broke that very breaking news you know so yeah and Devashish, did you meet him also during the yeah, course yeah. of this? I met, yeah, I met the pair of them. Yes, I met the pair. Of them. I found him really interesting, dude. I mean, the actor who's playing him, if Pera, the real Devashish, if the real Devashish is anything like that, <laughs> he, he must have been quite something to meet. <laughs> they, were, they were very sweet, yeah. I mean, see, that's the thing. I don't know how much you can glean from that particular meeting yeah. because when they, when we met, we were, you know. Like I was completely useless, but then we were cordial and we were nice with each other. So, yeah. And a lot of this I find is actually shot in the Times of India building, which is the old lady of Boribandar. Unless the art direction is so good that it's been recreated. Did you guys actually go back to that building in VT? We, and we went, we tried and shot at as many real locations as we could. So, wow. uh, you know, because we didn't want to green screen it and we didn't want to like, try and recreate it in a studio, but we shot in real actual locations as much as we could. You know, because that Times of India building, the one in VT. Oh, that is a set that we created. Uh, that was a magnificent set. Yeah, dude, because I, I, that my first job was there in that building. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, <laughs> I used to work for a radio station called Times FM back in the day. And I was like, you know, the, all these memories started coming back because our studio used to be in Bandra, but we used to go there to collect up checks and have meetings and things like that. And I was like, this is so ridiculously close. And we used to sometimes waltz into the Femina section and the Film Fair section and, you know, the uh, the Bombay Times section. So I, th I thought it was ridiculously close to the original. So, I mean, the, obviously the set and art direction is just superb. If, if you guys want to go to That is so nice to hear. That is so nice to hear. Wow. So, uh, th this when was this filmed? Was this filmed a while ago? Because we've been, you know, in the midst of this pandemic. Yeah, so uh, we, I signed on to the project in March last year and we started shooting from September of last year till this year, Jan-Feb. We wrapped by Jan-Feb, yeah. Just in time. 
Yeah. And the post production was completely done during lockdown. Yeah, I don't know how these guys pulled it off. They discovered new technologies and new systems to sort of make it work. But everything, all the post production was done during the the lockdown. And did you did you uh, have to dub for it, or did it sing sound when you were filming? Apart from the voiceover, I like I think ninety nine percent of it was sing sound. And nice. there was just like a few words here and there that we had to uh, dub later, and I had to provide the voiceover. So for that, I had to. But for uh, everything else, it was completely sing sound. Abhishek was excellent. Don't do this voiceover thing too much. Huh? It's called Hamare Pet Pilat. That's what we do for our profession. <laughs> and you've done such a good job. You know, especially when you narrate the stuff and you're talking about Harshad ne ye kiya, wo kiya. Really super stuff. Because you know, to me, that calls for a totally different skill set, right? I mean, you, it's it's not acting, acting. It's just voice acting. So great job on that. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> what was the most difficult part about playing Suchita Dalal? What was what did you find most difficult to get into that headspace? Well, to be honest, yeah, I mean, to work with someone like Hansel, and like you said, when your art and your wardrobe and hair makeup is so accurate, and helping you get into the skin of the character by creating that environment for you and making everything easy. Uh, for me and Pratik, again, because uh, again, you have also seen this personally, Rishikesh, because my first radio show was with you with Ladies Room. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so you've seen this. So it's for us the biggest. No, I wouldn't say challenge, but the biggest deal for us in out of all of this was just getting the opportunity, getting the massive opportunity like uh, like this, and have someone like Hansal trust you and believe in you and give you complete freedom to portray your character. So that itself was like a big deal. Everything else, we were like, oh, we were so grateful. We we're like, oh, that got that got that got that got. <laughs> Like we managed all of it, but we were so grateful for the opportunity. That yeah. <laughs> so you know, in that aspect, because the trading community and everything that revolves around the the markets, at least at that time, was predominantly Gujarati, and yeah. Hansa understands that Guju milieu so beautifully. I was even more impressed by how you managed to seamlessly uh, fit in. And another thing which I found really natural, I don't know whether it's Hansa's input or you yourself. is that most investigative journalists when they're doing this investigative journalism on screen they're always like oh eureka oh this moment that <laughs> and you just played it completely naturally it was like you know another day in office so was that just you or did hansel have to pull you back at particular points uh no no i think uh, it was also the writing here i think a lot of the credit goes to sumit and sora and again our dialogue writers vaibhav and karan because i mean when you have the words and the the way it's written when it's not so like exactly like you said pata chal gaya khula sa ho gaya like you know you get it right it's it's not like that when it's not like that it was easier for us to sort of make it a little bit more realistic because everybody actually the messages and the things that people have been telling me is to like okay it's so nice that it's finally Uh, we have some portrayal which is like a little more in the realist space but i feel like i've always been attracted to characters like that i feel that something and again not similar to me at all in a lot of senses i'm always attracted to something that's not at all close to who i am but yeah this was still challenging in the sense that she's a living breathing person but to rein in i think the words were there on the paper and hansel and i hopefully you know managed to fill in the blanks and and you know the thing is that that's what i started off with saying that this happened back in the day and you really you know hit the nail on its head saying it's not as though it's all over it still happens but the idealistic journalist the journalist who went after the story and sometimes the editorial reluctantly gave in and said okay fine i will tweak this a little bit but i will run with your story that to me for for anybody in the media is a big hura moment look at what we're going through in the media right now especially with news journalism and and for you that must be so important harking back to the days of true journalism actually it was nice to see that there is some there was something like that where there was integrity and uh, uh, integrity and credibility and you know verifying your sources before you get to and the insistence on the fact that you need some sort of confirmation even if it's not paper evidence which is established throughout the show uh like you said it's a little hard to see that nowadays so it is nice to play something like like that but again when it comes to playing characters because i was playing someone real it's it's pretty cool to see someone sticking to their guns and trying to get the truth out to the public because they deserve to know without judgment whether this is wrong or right is up to the public to decide 
but here it's 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 hard to get anyone to decide because you are portraying it with an opinion already with a judgment on the news already so yeah like you pointed out it's nice to see that that existed because some of the biggest scandals if i'm not wrong were broken by journalists at that point of time and and female journalists like the before scandal the rajan pillai this harshad mehta to a, to an extent ketan parekh as well so it's it's nice but I, i wish to see more of that now i mean there are a few journalists who are amazing but you know you know exception of the rule one of one of my 90s print journalist friends uh, said this to me and i want to want to break this up he said you know in the 90s when you were a print journalist you were supposed to be garib you know like these days you see tv journalists and all they have farm houses and you know lavish cars and things like that i want to take names yeah, but yeah. tv anchors are like you know they they are wealthy people yeah. but but print journalists in the 90s were very socialistic very idealistic you know like what sucheta is uh, or what shreya plays sucheta as which is wearing a you know a, a fab india kurta yeah. and just you know hanging out and and you know going after the truth so uh, in that aspect also this must this part must be really really special because is it it's not only the idealistic perspective but the fact that you know the, somebody could take this as an inspiration and be a journalist like that today i i know you don't make cinema to change the world you're just doing your bo- job but do you think cinema can do that anymore i i would hope so i would hope so rishikesh because i mean uh if you want to take back everything to like hark it back to the old days art also was a way to stick it to the man wasn't it so the whole point of art started out as revolution to be giving voice to the boy voiceless and all of that then it evolved over the time to sort of provide entertainment and still do that as well so i feel like it's not wrong if you're aiming just for entertainment but also if you could say something great or inspire someone or just like i don't know change the world is a big thing but if you yeah. can like how cool would that be how so cool? listen what's a skill you picked up in lockdown i mean people are learning softwares people are you know doing all kinds of things there's something that you picked up well i directed and wrote a web series of my own called a viral wedding which aired on which is still streaming on uh, eros now in may Sweet. so yeah that is something that i did now uh, and i was like okay itna kar liya ab rest lungi so now after that i've just been like okay now i did that no? okay let's just chill <laughs> that's nice w- was that was that a very the word viral seems as though it was written post the pandemic or was it, it was a script that was lying with day, you it was written a day after uh, prime minister modi announced a nationwide lockdown wow Yeah, it was written it literally that. a day after that, and we I ended up writing it again two days after that, and we shot the whole thing in ten days. And it's about yeah, a viral wedding, as you rightly guessed, is a play on the virus and the fact that the wedding was something online. And uh, while writing it, people actually told me that listen, it's a little far fetched. You think people can't wait for like, you know, twenty one days at that time when it was earlier announced, right? You think people can't wait for like twenty one days or three months or one month? Why would they get married online and do all of that? And I'm like, yeah, I. I f- I feel like that is uh, something people would do if pushed against the wall and turns out that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so yay. Hey, yeah, good on you. <laughs> Hansal Mehta is uh, in any any way you look at it is a legend. And you see I already accomplished actors like a Manoj Bajpayee turn around and say dude he made me do something in Aligarh which I have never done before. Correct. Uh, I mean Rajkumar openly says he owes his entire career to Hansal. what's special about the man what's special about what does he bring to the table that all of your previous directors have not i uh, see that's exactly i'm going to frame it in the, in the question that you just asked he gives you the table he gives it to you here take the table do what you want with it and there are not a lot of people who will first of all fight for your right to be at that table because i he fought for me and pratik to be on the show because again we are well we're not particularly like names or having you know fancy connections or what have you and he fought for our rights to be at that table and when we were there he gave us the table i i think this is what he does he gives you complete freedom he gives you furniture <laughs> you know and it's just you to get that respect and yeah just that respect and belief and faith from someone who's so accomplished 
in in you to pull off something he's like i he even said this to us once because me and pratik was sitting there like why why we were so surprised not that we were questioning it not that we were questioning it but kaise and he was like see i don't want to hire robots i want to hire people who are good for the job and i believe that they will do their homework and do what they're supposed to do if i need to calibrate something i will but beyond that it's all you so it's to get that much freedom it's indescribable i even told him that if you even require me to be in the background and be the table i will be it <laughs> so uh, how did this happen i mean chabra uh, called you auditioned you and then it went to hans hansel and then he he said let's do this or were there other people being considered for the part how well, did you finally work out some other people so um, when i walked into the uh, audition room so it was uh, indu from mukesh chabra's office and mukesh and i also have uh, known each other for quite some time uh, so i walked into the office and i see like you have the list right you have the project and you have the people and the names so i saw sucheta dalal and i saw like 10 names and every i'm not cheating you every single one of those names were women i admire deeply wow so the minute i saw that i don't know for some so i feel like your brain can work like one of two ways either you completely lose it so like hey bhagwan ye to like this is not going to happen like why bother and you leave or you you know don't give it your all or the second thing happened which is what happened to me so i saw those names and i'm like oh this is so ridiculous that i'm even trying out for this so let's have fun <laughs> it's it's not it's not going to like are chance hi nahi hai like i'm not even going to be considered for this because those are amazing accomplished women and i'm i'm a huge fan of like all of those 10 names so i was like okay chalo maza karte hain let's have fun i'm not even going to get this so let me just have fun and turns out you know that worked <laughs> Well done, Shreya. You want to tell me a couple of those names, or you think it's Anya Tikka? Oh no, 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 no! Because I want to work with those amazing, accomplished women later. <laughs> Just try my luck. But but really, you know, the thing is that a lot of people who believe in you and love you, like I do, will turn around and say, uh, "Oh, you know, this is Shreya getting her due." You know, this, I always knew that she could do this. But there are people who are going to look at Pratik and say, "Where did this guy come from?" And Uh, you know, as a co-actor, that must make you very, very happy because, from from what I can make out or gauge from you, is that you know you you're happy for people in the team, man. Yeah, so, I am. No, because you're equally happy for Saba, you're equally happy for for Imi, for all those people. So, so I see. So it's, it's this thing. Like I feel like a rising tide raises all boats. You know, I mean, we are in the same industry, most of us, and and I mean this for the I think, like people talk about Star Kids and Legacy and all of that, and I feel like they're the exception. in the sense that i think 90% of the people who come into the entertainment industry be it you in any form or be it me or be it anyone all of us have come from somewhere else right yeah. and all of our stories match on so many levels so like these kids like the star kids or whatever there i feel like again they're the exception in the sense that that's a small group very prominent dominant group yes but their stories are not something we can identify with what you and i identify is with time taking its time with opportunities coming uh, far and few in between and us giving it our all to make use of this limited opportunities that we have so even when it comes to pratik hansel even or again even in your journey from times like you just told me it's time it's taken all of us time it's taken us a lot of hard work it's taken other people to believe in us it's taken us to believe in ourselves so it's our stories are similar how can you not feel for people whose stories are similar to yours so i see myself in everybody whether it's saba or pratik or you or all of us because we all match yeah all of our uh, points and have like intersecting waves you know that's very beautifully put but having said that pratik just nailed it man i mean he said just everything about it was just so bang on it's just it's just lovely yeah. so uh, is there a scene there are no spoilers now because the show's out people are watching it loving We're it in a third week Rishi. yeah in a third week so uh, is there a scene that is your favorite scene i mean a scene that you still I, I watch and you have goosebumps yes i have loads but my actual favorite scene is some is a scene that a lot of people have also uh, brought up it's uh, when uh, she walks into the hotel when uh, harshad mehta offers sucheta dalal essentially a bribe the first yeah. gives her wine and i love that line where she says dude don't pick it because of the price yeah yeah just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's good yeah yeah i know people have been quoting that 
so I, I like I like the fact that we have a lot of like punch dialogues, very massy type in a classy show. I find it, I, I find the juxtaposition pretty cool. But yeah, that is one of my favorite scenes, and we were very excited to film it right from the right from the table read, Pratik and I. And I mean, the, the show is not about the way you look. I mean, you're a journalist who spends nights at the table putting out the right story. But yeah, there was no makeup, scene, by the way, on my face. Oh wow! But no that makeup, particular but that particular scene was quite jaw dropping. And I said, "Wow, hotty!" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you scrub okay, up actually, nice. You, you scrub little, up nice. Little, little kajal happened on that day, and little uh, lipstick. <laughs> no, no, you Otherwise, scrub no, up nice. When three, you want to look good, three. when you want to look drop dead gorgeous, you can, Shreya. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah, that was a good scene. That was a really, really good scene. Very crucial scene. And, and but that is something that even Hansel pointed out. It's exactly like you said because she's a journalist. We don't want this to be like a like how you know people are depicted usually in i don't know i think it's a film thing or maybe in some some shows where they glamorize no matter what no matter what you're playing it doesn't matter you have to look good so we made sure that you know this the looks part was not completely everything else will be taken care of you'll automatically look nice so forget about the look so anything that i had on scene apart from that one sari scene where there was a little kajal and lipstick only cream no makeup <laughs> and you know what i like about this show also is that it's slowly getting sticky you know what i mean it's not like uh, there are shows uh, you know and there are successful shows like you know that a uh, mirzapur will immediately get eyeballs but this is the slow burner you know scam 1992 people are slowly discovering it and just loving it you know you, suddenly people are saying whoa what is this show uh, the word of mouth thing is really really getting and yeah and as time is going by as more weeks are going by you must be getting more and more calls more and more messages of people discovering the show feels good feels good it it feels unimaginable because uh, prateek hansel and i were just discussing it the other day because we thought our show was a little like finance heavy like tech heavy yeah. you know so we didn't think we thought people would watch it gradually let it sink in soak in and all of that but people have been binging the show they're watching yeah. five six episodes at a stretch and then finishing the rest later in the, the next day so we are very surprised by that and yeah this like you said this is the third week i mean come on <laughs> <laughs> shaya uh, uh, big virtual hugs to you thank, thank you for you. talking to me thank god you. bless you stay safe and healthy and i hope to see you in person very very soon okay yes, we and will. well done on scam 92 so so thank so you. happy for you bye see ya thank you